Hello children, I am your science teacher Tilak and I would like to suggest you to subscribe my channel so that you get the notification at the earliest and you continue with your topics. So children, let's begin today's chapter, sorting materials into group. Let us understand how grouping is done, what is the purpose of grouping and what are materials and matters, what are the properties based on which the materials are classified. Can you imagine what will happen if with the things around us like at home, in the shopping mall or in the classroom are not classified? Don't you think our life will be messed up? Yes, we will not understand what to do, where to get. So children, you might have understood that the classification is not confined to only living things. Non-living things can also be classified. So how the things or the objects around us can be classified based on their properties such as appearance, their tendency of solubility in water and for this we need to understand what are solute, solvent and solution and how the classification of materials can be done based on children. The objects are made up of one or more materials and what are materials? Materials are substances which are used to make different types of objects and one object can be made up of same material or different kinds of material and these materials can be man-made or naturally occurring. The material which are similar in one or two ways can be put in one group or the material can be classified as the things made up of wood, fiber, metal, ceramic, or glass of course they are made in such a way because their uses are different depending upon the uses we select the material to make different types of objects of our daily life now you can see table is made up of wood marble is made up of glass and what about this pipe it is made up of plastic can you tell me what is this brick made up of yes it is made up of mud and what about your books and notebooks? Of course, they are made up of paper. And your cloth. See here, the shirt is made up of cotton. Can you think of any other material or fabric which is used to make shirt? What about your school shirt? Have you ever tried to find out what is the material used to make your school sh uniform? Okay, you must find out. So, object around us are made up of different types of materials. See, one material can be used to make many types of objects like table, chair, window, almira, doors. And similarly, cotton fabric or fibers are used to make carpet, yes, shirt, pant or gown or even sari, right? Here you can see plastic is used to make yes, hair dryer, toy and wood is made to make furnitures and you can see screwdriver, it is made of metal and the plastic can you find out what your car is made up of? what a car is made up of? so many different materials are used right? so now depending upon different states solid, liquid and gas the things can be classified according to their fixed shape or fixed volume can be classified as solid. If they do not have fixed shape and fixed but fixed volume then they are classified as liquid because they take the container's shape. And what about gas? How we identify them? They do not have fixed shape as well as fixed volume. And what are the different properties which can be used to classify different materials? Let us find out. So these are appearance, transparency, ability to float according to their density and magnetic properties also can be used and the conduction of heat and electricity. But we will be studying about few selective properties. These properties are based on appearance such as luster, they are lustrous, shiny or non-lustrous. What is their texture? Appearance refers 
to how it looks in shape, size and color. A paper looks different from cloth and a wood looks different from iron and iron again looks different from copper and aluminium but at the same time there are certain similarities but still we can identify now look at this gold bar it is very shiny yes hard to touch this shiny property of gold is used to make yes ornaments jewelry right and it is precious because of this so metals are lustrous malleable they can be beaten into sheet they can be drawn into wire and there are certain objects which are opaque according to passes of light through them we can classify them right some materials are rough to touch here you can see these are the copper wire they can be drawn into wire this is very unique property and you can see utensils are made out of metals because they are very good conductor of heat they are hard yes and food can be cooked very easily in such utensils what if it is made up of wood it will burn now some objects are lustrous they are shiny but some are dull what is this so dull yes yes it is a coal it is dark black structure right now graphite which is used in your pencil is it shiny yes it is smooth slippery because of this property it is used in pencil now what is this this is precious diamond it is hardest known object and it is very shiny so this property is used for making jewelries yes and as it is hardest material hardest object it is also used for cutting glasses and you can see sometimes when we keep these metallic substances exposed to natural environment they will tarnish or their glow will be finished as you can see in case of copper coin they are big, the copper when exposed to the environment it deposits one green color yes and the luster is no more there now these are different types of shiny materials or you can say stones these are used in ornaments and they are very precious and they are very valuable children now let's understand why water is termed as universal solvent what is solvent solvent is the substance which dissolves other substance whether a liquid gas or solid in it when a liquid dissolves in the solvent it is termed as miscible and when it does not dissolve in the solvent it is termed as immiscible and what about solid when solid dissolves in solvent it is termed as soluble and when it does not dissolve it is termed as insoluble substance for example kerosene oil and mustard oil does not dissolve in water so they are called immiscible substances and lemon juice orange juice they dissolve in water so they are termed as miscible substances see water is the solvent here for salt and you can see the oil it is on the surface of water so what does it mean it is immiscible so the substance which dissolve in water are called solute and a solvent is the substance which the solute to make the solution the mixture of solute and the solvent together is called solution not only the liquid and solid dissolve in water but it is gas such as carbon dioxide and oxygen which dissolve in 
water and it helps the aquatic plants and animal to survive inside the water now let us see this copper sulfate solution it is bluish in color yes copper sulfate is also soluble in water now see this sugar solution salt solution yes these are soluble substances and lemon and vinegar these are miscible substances right now let us see what we have learned we have studied about solid liquid gas state and we have also understood about soluble insoluble miscible and immiscible how these properties can be useful in our daily life this helps us to separate immiscible substances yes here you can see kerosene and water can be separated now see what is this this is the molecular arrangement of solid liquid and gas in gas you can see the molecules are freely moving but in solid it is compactly packed so it affects the nature of the substance you have, you will study about density yes so the substances with higher density will sink in water and with less density will float in water so what is density mass per unit volume is termed as density so substances which float on surface of water have less density than water right so let us understand with the example uh, an iron nail will sink in water but what about such a huge heavy ship why does not it sink so its design is made in such a way the mass per unit volume is less than the water so it floats on water surface and it does not sink so you can see this some toys and uh, some plastic balls they flow on water float on water they do not sink because of their low density similarly a cork will float on surface of water whereas rock will sink so let us understand what is transparency the substances through which the light passes and we can see are known as transparent substances what about the substances through which we can't see such as wooden door what are they called and why we can't see because light does not pass through these wooden doors you know light is necessary to see any object when it falls on any object and it is reflected back we are able to see it similarly there are certain substances through which we can see partially like we can see partially through frosted drawers we can see partially through butter paper so that property is called translucent and the substances are known as translucent substances so according to visibility we can divide substances as transparent substances translucent substances and opaque substances right now based on today's revision we have this table in which we have classified the different physical properties of according to appearance they can be lustrous non lustrous dull yes based on solubility we can classify as soluble insoluble miscible and immiscible and depending upon hardness substances can be classified as soft and hard and according to transparency or visibility we can classify them as transparent opaque and translucent now based on density substances can be floating or sinking in water so what are the advantages of classification now you can understand we can save time we can study the different materials yes substances living or non living such as in scientific study it is convenient to study different types of species so children this is how we can identify the substances depending upon similarities and dissimilarities 
and this makes our busy life easier and convenient yes so if you have to buy a bicycle you will just see what is it made up of yes similarly for choosing one is spectacles and a frying pan or cooking utensils yes you will just bother about what are these things made up of okay this is the picture in which you have to find out odd one out and you have to answer write your answer in the comment box 